I'm just going to come out and say it. Halloween, 1978, should have been a one-and-done slasher flick. There was no storytelling need to return to Haddonfield. However, since the franchise is ridiculously profitable, the original made $47 million at the box office of the time, roughly $150 million in today's money, not bad off of a budget of $300,000, we have to do this dance again, and again, and again. So, sooner or later you get to something like Halloween Kills, which is the worst type of film there is. Not a terrible film, not a boring film, not a film with no plot or anything else that normally makes critics get out their sharpest pen and most acidic ink, but the kind of film that doesn't need to exist, where nothing is set up and nothing is achieved, nobody grows or learns or develops in any way, shape or form. In fact, so little happens in this film that you could condense it into the opening montage of the next one, Halloween was still beating the dead horse, and nothing would have changed. There was no emotion behind this film. I didn't feel or care for anything or anyone. It was just kill after kill after kill to the point where it was just getting silly towards the end. Michael Myers was never in any danger of being stopped or even mildly inconvenienced by the legions of red shirts that appear to be united by some sort of demented belief that if they keep letting him kill them, he's eventually going to get tired and go for a lie down. You see, killbots have a preset kill limit. Knowing their weakness, I sent wave after wave of my own men at them until they reached their limit and shut down. Especially since he now seems to have an endurance slash healing factor that would make Wolverine blush. And since Michael Myers was never in any danger of being stopped, the film wasn't scary. Myers is going up against a group of firemen, all gone. An army of vigilantes who keep declaring that evil dies tonight. He'll huff and he'll puff and he'll blow them all down. The marketing seems determined to let me know that this film has the highest on-screen body count in horror history, but so what? Horror isn't about the quantity of the kills, it's about the quality. This guy can slice people up like a student going through free shots, but it's just a high body count that grows boring very quickly. It's not what I paid my money for, and not what I'm after in this film. Also, it doesn't help that out of all the deaths in this film, the only one I'm going to remember is one of the most hysterical deaths I think I've seen in many a moon. I mean, it felt like it was one out of one of those ghastly, scary movie films that infected cinema about a decade ago and ruined parody films forever. Except here, it was so out of place and confusing. It also doesn't seem to help that this seems to be the only small town in America where no one seems to own a gun. But... Away from the endless slaughter of pointless red shirts, we find that actually there are some interesting ideas. The idea of a town reacting to having such a monster in its midst about the law breaking down in pursuit of anger and fear as the loudest voice is followed with no regards as to whether or not it's leading people into help or harm. The way utterly horrifying events can be downgraded into stories to scare children with, thus removing them from their disturbing origins. And also, what few characters get even the slightest development wind up dead. Laurie Strode doesn't adapt, push, evolve in any way, shape or form. Myers certainly doesn't, and everyone else is just there to die. Okay, look, I, I said I'd try and get away from the death scenes, and I really, truly am trying. Truly I am. It's just that what few good ideas this film has, the few characters that I want to see stick around are just crushed under the relentless march of death. This is the middle film of a trilogy, and it feels like it, but if you believe it's the last gasp of this particular franchise, then I'll have what you're having. There's just this sense of going through the motions, but no one is being moved into a new position for the big finale. I was bored. My wife, who'd never seen one of these things before, was simply confused and bored. I mean, setting a horror film five minutes after the last one finished is an amazing idea. The joy of surviving and vanquishing evil being replaced by the horror and dread as you find out that you failed. It survived. It's still coming for you. The mental and physical exhaustion combined with your inevitable wounds playing into a sequel that takes place the same night that you thought you'd have finally claimed victory. Except that doesn't happen here. Phil, you could have removed Myers completely from this film, made him only a myth, a monster perhaps glimpsed by scared, excited, terrified people here and there in shadows and moonlight as the town rips itself apart, innocent people being killed in the crossfire, each death heightening the fear and paranoia as some confess to their lethal mistakes and others blame the bogeyman, meaning that no one is sure where or if he is, forcing innocent people to corrupt themselves, changing their lives forever. I mean, that film is sort of in there, it's just... 
Every 15 minutes or so, Myers wanders on screen, kills another few people without breaking a sweat, and then toddles off again for a Mars bar on a Red Bull, and we have to start building the tension up again from nothing. I mean, what else is there to say? Halloween Kills has some interesting ideas, but they just get disrupted by this film's desperate attempt to maintain the status quo. And it doesn't so much end as it just sort of stops, as if it's decided that 105 minutes is long enough and it's got other better things to do. It doesn't. This film should be 90 to 95 minutes at the most. Oh, and did I mention that despite having one of the most recognisable and iconic themes in arguably all of cinema, this film barely uses it? Seriously, this thing misses more open goals than Keir Starmer. So, yeah, Halloween kills. If you're in the mood to watch a load of forgettable, irrelevant idiots try to defeat a blender by jumping into it for utterly pointless reasons, then go for it. But if you're after a horror film which is actually scary and being a bit of a... Hold me a bluff old traditionalist, but I... It's something I insist upon them being, then go and watch the unimpeachable original. I'll catch you next time. So, yeah, this film is a bomb. Do not see this film under any circumstances, but... What do you guys think, and what is your most let down horror sequel? Comment below, let me know. I'm Daniel, it's been a Duncan. If you enjoyed this video, please like, share, and subscribe.